Ah yes, Japan and their robotics. This is in fact our first robot sample we've ever received at Good E Reader, so thank you to the company Icon for sending us this unit for review. This is the Kumita, and this robot walks on paper. Yes, inside the box are a stack of tiles that you lay out, and the robot will find its way to the end goal. Along the way, it faces trials and tribulations of color changes, directional influences, and other things that may assist or hinder its progress. But aside from some promotional videos on YouTube, we really don't know what's in the box, how everything feels, and how it all works in the real world. So we're going to figure that out together right now. This is a very heavy box, and I don't know if that's attributed to the actual robot itself or if the panels are made out of something other than just paper because it does seem that this is pretty substantially heavy. Let's crack it open and see what's inside. So inside the box, first thing you see is the instruction manual, and this is going to be in English, of course, and it is going to tell you how to use it. So make sure you hold on to this because if you're not sure what all the panels do and everything, you're going to want to need these. And you'll see here that you have a start panel and a go panel, and in between you can do different things. So if you want the robot to go straight, if you want him to turn, if you want him to play music along the way or do color changes, all of that is going to be in here. And now inside the box you are presented with a ton of panels and it looks like there's th four stacks of ten so we're gonna take these out and we are going to check out what all of this is going on so there's a paper sleeve around here and each panel is coded differently so much like NFC and other communication services that devices have to transmit data these are already programmed to do this thing for example if you don't take the paper off and change it, this is always going to be up for the robot. So as the robot walks along, he knows that it needs to go this way. And if you turn it like that, it's going to go up like that or down like that. So you can change the direction of where the robot is going to go. We'll show you all that when we get into it. There's a little bit of magnetics here too. There seems to be some sort of magnetics because you see they're very much kind of stuck together so we're going to explore what that all is in the review portion of this you get another stack and we get a third stack and we get the fourth stack all of these are critical to the function of the unit because you can't use or do anything with the robot alone so now we're going to take out the robot this is really cool because again it's our first robot. We also have one little thing in here, but it looks like it's just a spacer. In fact, there's nothing else in the box. We're going to put that off to the side. Here is the Kumita robot, everybody. I'm going to be very gentle with all the packaging here. Here is the Kumita robot. Very cool. This is all going to illuminate, so if you go through a color change tile, it's going to go from blue to pink, etc. The gray colored friction ball like rollers are motorized rollers, in fact, which connect to the motor inside the robot. The two metallic roller balls at the bottom are not magnets, they are for stability purposes. Eight magnets are inside each panel so that the panes stick to each other. In terms of the panels and tiles, invisible codes such as location and instructional information are printed inside and the robot moves reading the information with the sensor camera at the bottom center. You also have a on and an off switch at the bottom. Now you know what, looking at this as is, I think you actually have to open it because it maybe runs on actual batteries and not lithium ion charging. Taking the shroud off, you'll see that it is threaded for the screw right there. And it looks like we have a couple things going on here. We do have a micro USB and an SD card. And from what they told us, these are only for internal use and not for the actual customer. So if you try to do anything, it just won't work. What does work is right here, you do have four AAA batteries that need to be put in here in order to be used. But that's really cool because that means this doesn't have lithium ion, which means you can ship it anywhere in the world with no trouble. So we're gonna throw some batteries in here. So I'm not sure if this goes under any calibration or anything like that. So if I put it on table, it looks like she's starting to move around a little bit. So that's kind of cool. What we have to do now that we have everything set up, we got to actually crack out these tiles, put them down and make a little map for this little guy or girl to move along. <laughs> So 
So pretty self-explanatory actually. So this is the robot paper tile that goes down and that is the home destination. So we're just gonna build a light course here, something like that, and we'll put a couple things along the way. Doesn't seem to be any calibration or anything or any buttons, so we're just gonna see what happens. Pretty straightforward, we have a start and end, but if we interrupt this line and put a music note in between, for example, let's see what happens this time. Robots don't come across our desk very often, but we're glad this one did. This thing is fun. It's cute. It's chunky and heavy and everything you'd expect out of something we never expected. It gives kids an accessible and easy entry into light programming through tiles that require no reading skills whatsoever. Everything is straightforward. Everything is self-explanatory. One can be easily turned off by something like this if it gets too technical, but that's not what we're feeling here. It's just so easy. And because you get 40 tiles, technically the combinations are limitless. If you want to find out more about this fun little robot set, check the description down below, and thanks for stopping by.